WTJ-TV. And we're putting together a magazine format show on current issues, and I saw your work for the first time yesterday. Wait, wait a minute. You, you, you're talking about my column? No, no, of course, I follow that regularly. No, I'm referring to that off-the-cuff interview you did with Senator Ryan. You two are related by marriage, aren't you? I'm a widower. I still consider Frank to be a brother-in-law. Yeah, I knew that. Uh, that's what impressed me. You were tough with him. Well, why shouldn't I be? Uh, he's running for political office. He's open game. Of course, I knew he could handle it. Uh, not that he was expecting it. What I'm saying is, is that I like your style, and I'd like to talk to you about seeing more of it. Perhaps you could do some political interviews for us. Are you uh, free for dinner tonight? Tonight? Sure. Oh, good. Um, well, my time is open. Uh, are you uh, free? Whatever time you like. Good. Let's say 7.30 at my office. Uh, uh, why don't you meet me there, and we can go somewhere in the neighborhood. I'm at 853 West 53rd Street. Oh, that'll be fine. Thank you. Good. Looking forward to it. You're not going to believe this. I already don't. You haven't heard yet. I just heard you make a date that wipes out plans made not five minutes ago for the three of us. Oh, Billy, Billy. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we'll do it another evening. No, we won't. Lee, Lee, this is work. Now, I know that doesn't mean an awful lot to you. Oh, oh hold the phone here, Mr. Finelli. Now, you're not going to start turning everything around and uh, throwing your tough, fine principles at me. Uh, you were the one that just did something rotten. <laughs> Gentlemen, Congressman. Oh, no, no, not for me, Kevin. And don't count your chickens. It's bad luck. Now, may I remind you, on the matter of elections run from Ryan's bar, we have never suffered a defeat. He's right, come to think of it. I thought you had thought about it. That's why you asked him to run. Ah, she's right. All right, right everybody. <laughs> hey, everybody. I just heard it on the news. What is it? It's now official. The governor has announced Cliff's retirement from Congress for reasons of health, and he's calling a special election within 40 days. <laughs> <laughs> Babe, are you ready for subway station duty? Oh, just had me the leaflet. Oh, my, the entire Rosary and Altar Society passing them out the first year. Oh, no, no, Mary was the one. She, I, she always had Father McShane hand them out in the confession. <laughs> Jill, Jill, I want you to introduce Frank. Oh, I'm prepared, Yeah, but don't steal my thunder. Don't worry. Ah. Otherwise, <laughs> Hey, Seneca, what a good thing to see you here. Uh, excuse this ruckus. Uh, you probably heard Frank's Frank's about... camping. No, I know. That's why I'm here. I promised Jillian a check. Jill asked you for a check. No, no, she didn't ask me. She asked Roger. I just happened to be there. Yeah, I hope it helps. Oh, it'll help us. Hey, Frank. Did you mean all these zeros? Yeah, yeah, Johnny, I did. Well, I don't get it. I thought you and Frank... Reasons, okay? Yeah, well, thanks. And Frank thanks you, too. Look, if, if you don't have to rush off, stick around. He's going to announce it in about 20 minutes. Well, so what are you going to say by way of introduction? Oh, I don't know exactly. I thought maybe I'd say, ladies and gentlemen, you all know that Frank Ryan is a brilliant public servant. But did you also know that he is the world's most wonderful lover? And the most wonderful man, and the person with whom I invest in my life and my future. That's going to be a tough act to follow. Not to mention to live up to. You have, and you do. And now that this is all settled, I keep wondering what I was resisting. What you said was that you never want to feel so much that you can't think anymore. Well, I had it backwards. Oh, yeah. I'm so happy. Oh, uh, I feel like we're starting right from the very beginning. And the past seven years moved just the way they had to so we could get here. I know, I know. And you know what? Huh? The best is still to come. <laughs> Jimmy, what's causing the delay? Well, the news just said that a truck overturned near one of the exits. Uh, nothing's moving. Well, isn't there an alternate route we can take? I could if I could get off of this one. Uh, BQE down to the Williamsburg Bridge. Well, listen, Maybe. whatever you do, but just make it fast, please. I have to be at Ryan's bar on time. So, you are going to criticize my principles. Mm -hmm. The lady who quit her job with no note is leaving a lot of people in the lurch just to suit herself. Are we on to that again? You really are a wonder. Every act of mine since we met has been held up for examination, for criticism and judgment by you. I left an unimportant job in an unimportant organization so that I could be with someone who was beginning to be important to me. 
And what in the world did I do to unleash the Puritan in him? What is puritanical about respecting commitments? I happen to believe in them. Also in work, which I know is, is uh, 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 not a part of your philosophy, uh, and things that pertain to work, like making the most of any opportunity that might happen, like making uh, appointments, even though uh, it may be inconvenient, and then uh, keeping them on time. Now, if I tell a guy I'm going to be there, I'm going to be there. Well, wonderful. Now, can you explain to me why that noble notion does not apply at home? Huh? Work, work, work. Well, that's just handy, but what about a promise made to your daughter and to someone that you profess to care about as a commitment? That doesn't count. Wait a minute. May maybe we should start over. Let me explain what the call was about and why it was important, though I really don't see why I should have to. Uh, the guy on the phone was the owner of WTJ-TV. Now, he saw the interview I did with Frank. Yes, I surmise. And he wants to talk to me about doing more of the same. Jack, yeah. Jack. That's grand. Must it be tonight? Well, that's what he suggested. And the nature of this business is a strike when the iron is hot. Now, even Ryan understands that, oh, don't you, Oh, stop now using Ryan, and stop implying that I have the mentality of a four-year-old. And while you're at it, kindly stop dodging the basic issue here. Well, I think we disagree on what that is. Oh, no. It's very simple. Do we count or don't we? Or are there commitments and, uh, commitments? There are priorities. Well, then I'd like to be one, as you are with me. And if you bring up my walking out on that job one more time, I'm walking out of here. Looks like you've done it again. What's that? Hoisted me with my own argument. And so? We compromise. Can you give me the number of uh, WTJ-TV in Manhattan? Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> uh, hello, uh, Mr. Jones, please. Jack Vanelli calling. Uh, I'll talk to your secretary. Oh, hello. This is Jack Finelli. I have a uh, dinner engagement with Mr. Jones at 7.30 this evening, and that's not going to work out for me. I was wondering if you could, uh, if you could check his schedule and see if he has something earlier, uh, say around 5.30. Good. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Although I really don't see why I should have to. Well, let's get uptown. <laughs> Thank you to meet Lee Kirkland. Oh! Lee, this is my sister in law, Siobhan Noah. Hi, I missed you the other night. Well, you're the one with the mouth scissors? My, well, right, my niece told me about them. Isn't she glorious? Yeah. Jack, uh, would Ryan maybe like to sit on the bar? Because that way she can see. Good idea. Okay. okay. Ready? Yeah. Good morning. This is Eugene Helm, Channel 10 on the spot. We're here at Ryan's Bar, a sort of vanishing species of establishment on the Upper West Side of Manhattan, where it's rumored that former Senator Frank Ryan will announce his candidacy for the newly vacant seat in the House of Representatives. How about a brisket, Jack? Hey. Sure, thanks. Do you have an extra oh, one? Might I have plenty, plenty. Thinking about getting back into PR? Yeah. I'm just uh, checking out the candidate. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. You. Your attention, please. Mm. And uh, at this point, I'd like to introduce you all to one of New York's brightest young attorneys. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you, everyone, and welcome. I have been asked to make a uh, few opening statements, so uh, I think I'll begin by introducing myself. My name is Jillian Coleridge, and I've lived in this neighborhood practically my entire life. And Riverside, to me, represents what New York City is all about. A microcosm of an amazing city. Now, seven years ago, there was a local boy <laughs> who ran for city council. And his campaign was truly astonishing, because just as it started to get off the ground, he had a terrible accident that nearly caused him to be paralyzed completely. But this didn't stop him. 
Why is she bringing up? He continued this campaign from his it's heart. Important, he, said. he got himself elected, and he fought his way back to a full recovery. And from that point on, his career moved like a meteor. He was oh, recognized Mama throughout the state. Yeah. And she he went to we Washington, and he served as our senator. Right. And he has truly served us brilliantly. Until one of those outrages of politics occurred. And he became a victim. A victim of a terrible plot to pull him out of office. It was a setup. It was a scandal. And I think all of you today know that he has been proven innocent of all those charges. And no more daunted than he was when that accident laid him low. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Frank Ryan. Well, I'd just like to say that it gives me such joy to be here today and to look out and to see so many people who gave my career its start and are back here today to pledge their continuing support. Now, as you all know, the governor just announced officially that Congressman Clifford Larkin is stepping down from his seat in the House of Representatives. We in Riverside all owe a great debt of gratitude to Congressman Larkin for the tremendous service that he's given this community and the hard work that he's put in over the years. Yeah. Now, my next statement is not going to come as a surprise to any of the people gathered here in this room. The rumors are true. I'm throwing my hat in the ring and I am declaring myself a candidate for Congressman Larkin's seat in the House of Representatives in the Congress of the United States, uh, I want to go back to Washington again! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And I want to say that nothing could make me happier than going to Congress to specifically serve the people of this community. Because I know you and I love you. This is my home and Riverside has given me so much. And right now, I just want to take just a moment to have you meet two people who taught me how important it is to give back. Mother, Dad, please come out here. Please, come on, Dad. Come on now. I don't think there's many people, I don't think there's many people in this room right now who don't know Maeve and Johnny Ryan, but I don't think I've ever taken the opportunity to say this publicly. These two people instilled in me the values that I want to carry back to Washington now. Well said. Patrick, come on up here. Siobhan, right, please. I also want everyone to meet my brother and my sister because they are examples of people who give back. Dr. Pat Ryan, he saw a need. He had a dream. And he now runs a clinic, a free clinic, in this neighborhood to serve the people of this community. Woo! Pat Ryan. Oh. My sister, Siobhan. Ryan Novak graduated from the police academy and now serves as one of New York's finest. Oh. I just want to say that I am as proud as I can be of my family. And I wanted them to share this moment with me, this very special moment, because for me, this represents a new beginning. And now, with your help and with God's help, I am going to go to Congress and I am going to do everything I can to help represent and to serve this district in every way I know how. On my money. How is it that I am not included in your support system, Frank? Who are you? What's going on? Who am I? Yeah. I am Mrs. Charlotte Greer. Right. What? Right. What? what is this, The right? candidate married me a year ago in St. Louis. He then divorced me took my money, and came home. Oh, I have on. never, I have, have never right seen this woman up. before in my life. I expected such a reaction. Oh, what's going on? Really, I swear right. to you, I've never seen her you before. You are not going to get away with this. I'm staying at the Hotel Sancerre, and I intend to remain there until I collect the money that that man stole from me. Ladies and gentlemen, I have no idea what this is about, but clearly, somebody is setting me up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. doing that, aren't they? 
Well, I was afraid, as I said, that he would not tell the truth. So I have brought along some proof, some ladies proof. and gentlemen. <coughs> copies of our marriage certificate. You'll be hearing from me tonight. Hey, what are you talking about? One more picture, please. mysterious woman enters Frank's life. I have nothing to hide. Your story doesn't, as they say, hold water. What will her past reveal? And... Did Patrick tell you about our trip? We're going to Cape May for the weekend. I and mean, I'm going to cook such wonderful, healthy meals for him. Going to cook, huh? So you're not staying at a hotel? Oh, no, no. We're going to be staying at a private guest cottage. On Ryan's Hope. Who are you? I'm your wife. Frank's in trouble. You have ruined my life. You have taken all my money. And I made myself quite clear to you. Ryan's Hope. Hey, Mr. Ryan. Ryan's Hope. Hey, Mr. Ryan, you got a saddle for that horse? Don't give me any of your lip. I don't need a saddle. <laughs> I wonder who's taking who for a walk. Good question. <laughs> Come on, big boy. Back already? Yeah, Finn didn't feel much like the park. I think he liked it better when little John comes with us. Uh, any word from Frank? Or it's too soon yet, huh? Oh, you had barely time enough to get to the woman's hotel room. Did you buy the paper? If I thought the paper could tell me something I didn't know, I'd buy a million papers. How about Siobhan, the police teller? No, she hasn't called. Now, I know that you bought the paper. John, I'd like to see for myself just how bad it is, unless you threw it into the trash. I should have. Well, you can now. Francis says he has a, a full week to prove that that woman's story is false. Is that true? The party needs a week to put a name on the ballot, a name they're convinced can win. Well, does that mean that they're looking for a man it right now? It means they're praying he can clear his own name, and I'm, I'm convinced he will too. Now, look, hey, if Frank can, uh, can get this real woman to see him, I mean, look him dead in the eye and say, you married me, you took my money, and all the rest of that garbage she's been spouting. If he can do that, she will crack. I mean, alone with him, one on one, she'll give herself away, and, and he'll get the truth. Please, God. Yes? Hi, Grant. I'm here to see Miss Greer. Oh, uh, wait. You can't go in. You'll have to be in. Sure, I can go in. Hold it. Mrs. Ryan is very busy. Now, you'll have to make Excuse an appointment. Excuse me. Is there something I can do for you? Uh, out. Come on, let's go. Jimmy, Come on. Nice you can't do it. Ethel, thank you. I'll let you know if I need to. All right. Who are you? Oh, no, no, it's all right, dear. Just start with me, that's all. Well, even so... Oh, 
Well, you this don't help here. You just think that I've been cooking every day of my life for the last 30 years. Yeah, all that doesn't mean. Oh, such nonsense. Oh, it doesn't even hurt that much. Maybe not, compared to some of the other hurts you pants today. That told me about Frank. Then I talked to Jill before she left for St. Louis. Well, I'm not so much hurt about that as I'm angry. Have you seen the news? I saw the headlines. Predictable. So why don't I make us oh. some tea? Oh, yeah, I'd love it. There's some tea water on already, as a matter of fact. Oh, and this day, it started out to be so grand. Francis a press conference, and Jillian making the introductory remarks. Oh, she was wonderful. She really was wonderful. And then Francis stepped up and announced that he was going to run for Larkin's seat in the House. And when he said that I want to go back to Washington, oh, you should have heard them. They all cheered, reporters included. Oh, and now this news. <sighs> when did this woman show up? Well, it was just after Francis thanked the family, and then we hear this voice screaming from across the bar that she'd married him, and that, uh, that they'd been divorced in St. Louis, and he'd absconded with all her funds. Oh, <laughs> that's something else. And then she produces this bogus marriage certificate. And Jill said there was a prenuptial agreement, too. Oh, that outrageous. Well, maybe Jill will find out something in St. Louis. Let's just hope that. Frank will beat this. Yes. Hey, why don't I do the potato salad for you? Oh, dear, they're still too hot. Don't. I have to do something. How's little John? I'm going to go check on he's little John. He's fine. He's fine. He's reading Coppelia to Ryan. Kathleen's oldest left one of the ballet books here. And so Ryan is seeing that particular ballet this evening. Oh, is he? Mm-hmm. Yes. Lee Kirkland invited both she and Jack to the ballet. Oh, that's nice. So you must be getting to know the Kirkland sisters pretty well by now, huh? Uh, well, not yet, but... I may. We had a nice long talk with Amanda the other night, didn't we? Well, we talked some. She seems enough sweet enough, child. Professor's all kinds of concerned about Patrick's health. Professor, you didn't think it was sincere? Oh, no, that's not what I meant. I'm sure, I'm sure I know she was. Did you find her... What? I don't know. Hidden? No, that's not the word I want either. I... I think I know what you mean. I wouldn't be at all surprised that Amanda only shows the sunnier aspects of her personality to people. And keeps the darker side to herself. She's been worried, sir. There was a situation at the clinic today, Mary. Well, Amanda expected one thing and something else happened and whoop! And I tried to calm her down and I shouldn't have said anything at all. But she reacted badly? Terribly. Well, she overreacted. I see. You think that she's still emotionally troubled. Yeah, I do. And I really hope I'm wrong. How's your hand? Oh, good as new, thanks to my friends. Well, I tell you, if I see anything amiss about her, I'll certainly let you know. Thanks. Confidentially, okay? Oh, most assuredly. You just cut the act right at the top. I could let that get to me, but I won't. Death before dishonor. Right? The first question is, who's paying you? Death before dishonor. Hmm. Some of that Ryan lore seems to have had a lasting impression. Or are you in this all by your lonesome? Either way, you're heading for a criminal indictment. This game will get you busted. Along with the law, the liquor. My favorite, Irish. Also yours. I don't drink with you. Another bit of Ryan law. When in doubt, win. I intend to. Am I supposed to be impressed? Maybe I'm supposed to be terrified that I'm trapped in some science fiction nightmare. Ha! You, uh... You could have picked up any of this information from my old Senate bio, all this Ryan sayings. You could have found out my dad's best Irish by staying in the bar for three minutes. Every voter in Riverside has my signature on constituent letters. Some can probably even forge it better than your flunky. Marriage documents, marriage certificates, prenuptial agreements. What'd you think I'd do? Fall over in a faint? Let you cost me the election? No, darling, I really expected this in public. You always hid me from your family. And of course you're going to tell the world that I'm a stranger. Hmm? But I really never thought that you would try to keep it up in private. 
I'm rather overwhelmed, Frank. All right. I'm going to say this one time just to get the record straight. You told me where the bug is and I'll talk directly into it. I have never set eyes on you before today well, in... 14 Ra months ago at Ted and Sharon Brown's party. Remember? I remember it. I know you do. Gray suit, blue shirt, and red tie. I was jammed. I'd been there for an hour, and I'd been dying to get out. All of a sudden, you walked in. Yeah, I went to a party given by Ted Brown. But I came late, and I left early, and I did not meet you. Oh, indeed, you did leave early. So did I. I went back to my office. We had a great adventure. I am sorry that you have to deny it, Fred. I don't have to. I took one look at you. You took one look at me, and we plotted our escape. I said goodbye to Ted, I said goodbye to Sharon. I drove down the driveway, and I waited. And after a few moments, you followed me, opened the door, and I slipped in beside you. And believe me, it was to the races after that. I faced your line at the River Club till 4 a.m., back to your hotel, a Lafayette, room 526. It was wonderful. I hope somewhere you feel the loss. You've done some homework. I'm your wife. And I am the King of England. And this is Buckingham Palace. And blacks, white, and so what? Charges like yours don't stand up in court. Even with documented proof. A phony marriage certificate is not a documented proof of... This was proof real. But I'm not just talking about that. How about this, my love? How about joint charge account records? How about bank statements? And you said, hang on to them all. We may have a tax audit. And all I ended up with was a divorce and a prenuptial agreement, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I do have documented proof. Good God. <laughs> I'm your wife. You had help with this. You're not operating alone. Anger gives energy. Anger for what? Who are you? I am the ex Mrs. Francis Michael Xavier Ryan. You have ruined my life. You have taken all my money. And I'll be damned if I'm going to see it spent on other love. Politics. Zillian Coleridge. Have I made myself quite clear to you? Hi, you're home early. I couldn't stay there anymore. Where, the clinic? Lee, I don't know what I'm going to do. I think maybe I'll have to quit. But then I'll never see Pat again. Oh, boy, would she love that. It isn't fair when you plan something beautiful and it falls through. You have a right to be disappointed. Oh, who does she think she is? Amanda. I am very sorry. I am very sorry that Frank Ryan is in trouble. I'm very sorry, but it is not my fault. And it is not Pat's fault. Why? Why is everything so wrong for me? Come here, come here, sit down with me. Come, come here. Come here. Okay, let me guess, huh? Pat told you about Frank's uh, press conference, right? So far? Yes. Okay. And somebody told you you shouldn't get upset or disappointed. But that's just crazy. I was there. It was a horror. The whole thing. Oh. Uh, oh. Well, how could you love Pat and not be upset about his brother being sabotaged? No! No. <laughs> he promised. We had a week and he promised he'd go with me. You, you, you want to tell me about this from the beginning? The whole story? All right, not right now, when you're ready. <laughs> we had a plan. <laughs> Cape May for the weekend. You know the guest house. Remember, you were talking about Cape May. Right. Well, Pat said that we would drive up there later today. And I got all my work done at work, all of it. I even told Faith about it. 
appreciated it. But I was so happy. I was so happy. I didn't care. And then he comes in and he tells us that his brother is in trouble and he couldn't go. Not even for one night, Lee. He just left me there, standing there alone. And, well, you know, I felt like crying. And then she saw it. She started lecturing me, screaming. Faith Coleridge on and on about how loyal the family is, how close they are. That when you're involved with one Ryan, you're involved with the whole family. And no, no, she wouldn't stop. She cut me to ribbons. I couldn't even say one thing. I tried, and then I finally had to run out. Well, that she thinks she is. Poor baby. <laughs> oh, honey. Maybe I'd better have a talk with Dr. Coleridge, huh? No, don't. I mean, please, don't. Well, okay. If you want to handle it yourself, that's best. My ways. Just get even and never let her set eyes on Pat again. Sounds like you've got a plan in mind there. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> it was a pretty good way to sound, though. Oh, it sounds good. <laughs> oh, Lee. My only plan is I just want to love him. That's all. Gosh, I hope you'll take off next weekend. I do care. I care very much about Frank. And I can see that Pat needs to help him. Oh, Lee, it was just I had my heart set well, on it. There'll be other weekends. You, you could do something in town tonight. Uh, it's kind of a long shot, but I asked Jack and little Ryan to the ballet tonight. I could maybe rustle up some extra house seats at Scopalia oh, tonight. Sure. <gasps> Yes, or, um, or Pat and I could see a play or something like that. Oh, just the two of us. That's even better. <laughs> Call him. <laughs> it wouldn't be any harm to ask, but it. When in doubt, ask. <laughs> <laughs> and now the sun is out. Look at you. <laughs> oh, you are so good to me. <laughs> I don't know what I would do without you. What can I do for you? What can I do for you? Tell me. <sighs> Tell me. Amanda Panda, just be well, okay? Just be well and happy. I will. <laughs> I promise. Okay. <laughs> no. No, it's not clear enough for me. No. I want to know who hired you. The one who gave you amnesia. I can't remember what never happened. Now tell me the truth. You know the truth. I know my half of it. Tell me yours. I loved you. I will prosecute you. I'll put you behind bars for years. God help me. Yes, God help you. But he won't until you help yourself, Charlotte. Charlotte. You took my name. That's not your real one, is it? That's the first time you've spoken All right, let's name. get back to where we were. God help you. You said that right immediately after I mentioned prison? God help me. Yeah. It all over again. I thought I was dead. Oh, come off this. Come off this. Now, just who puts you up to? You don't want to face a grand jury all alone, do you? That hurts, right? Huh? Not that. You're going to have to tell me when to applaud. Oh, you have done vicious things to me. You have taken advantage of me every chance you could. I knew I'd come out of this in one piece. I knew I would survive it. Right this second. I don't know. A very cruel friend. No. I am very smart, and you're not so dumb yourself. So how about a truce? Truce? Yeah. You make an official retraction in tomorrow morning's paper. 
to what? Die here by myself in private? Oh, how typical, Brad Cryer. I win. You lose. No, no. You make the retraction. I drop the charges. What charges? I'm the one in charge. I refer you to the last page of our joint bank account. You closed that account without my knowledge and took $218,000 of my money. Now, I may not be able to put you behind bars for that, but I can certainly bar you from Congress. Now, I want you, my dear husband, to take this and to study it. And to please understand there can be no truth. What do you want from me? Satisfaction. What does that mean? Extortion? You want a quarter of a million bucks or so? Except I never wronged you. How can you stand there and lie to me to my face? Don't you know me well? Oh, will you knock it off? I'm not the one who did the homework. You are. I don't know you from Adam, but you know me. You know my favorite drink. You know my hotel room in St. Louis. The Ryan Law. The rules I live by. Well, here's one. Don't get mad. Get even. Now, you stick around. You keep after me. And sooner or later, before you know it, I'll get even. It seems so long ago that we said our feelings would never change. It's amazing. If you wise up, give me a call. You've got the number. Jack and Ryan to an elegant evening at the ballet. But memories of Mary still trouble Jack. Ryan's Hope, weekdays. Put them in the dungeon. Make them eat wheat bread. Oh, yum. You look stunning. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Ryan is in the back getting all dolled up. She's all a flutter about going to the ballet tonight. But I'm afraid Jack isn't back yet. I think he had some kind of a meeting about a job. Yeah, I, I know. I'm ridiculously early. He's reforming me. <laughs> I'm not intruding on you, am I? Mr. Ryan insisted I come up. Oh, no. He just knows your company will do me good. Why don't you put your things down here and sit with this? I'm just stewing here, that's all. And sewing. Oh, yes. Well, I'd rather keep my hands busy. <laughs> I'd rather... Take my anger out on a pair of trousers and needles and do what I afraid I would like to do. Wring that woman's neck who showed up at Frank's press conference. How in the name of heaven could a thing like that happen? A perfect stranger walks into my house, tells a pack of lies, and before she, we can prove her fault, it's too late and the man's chances are gone. Ugh. This, all over the city. Is that possible? As a former member of the press, I'm sorry to say it is. It's also intolerable. Oh, more than that. Francis, who has so much to give, is going to be prevented from serving? I'm so sorry. I wish there was something I could do to help. Oh, I appreciate that. Money? Pardon me? Would it help? You know, I, I, I happen to have a lot of it. Not that I did anything to get it, but it's there, and if it could be used to help, I'd be more than happy. Please, that's very generous of you. Thank you, but I... Money is not what's needed. It's time. Time to prove this woman is a fraud. Time before the party has to pull away from Francis just to protect itself. Huh. Not that I understand that mentality, of course. Well, I expect you do, but you don't like it, and why should you? You may be right. Of course, Jack is in a state himself, much as he ever lets anything like that show. You know, I used to think that it was just the connection with Mary that kept him so involved with Frank, but it's much more than that, isn't it? There's a real friendship there. Well, and you all, you're a real family to him. Jack is certainly part of it. That was Mary's triumph. <laughs> but as far as keeping her, we've never lost that connection. Not one of us, and I can't imagine any time when we will. This was Mary. How very beautiful she was. Yes, indeed, she was.
Will you tell me about her? The guarantee of two spots a week with an option for three if there's something hot. Well, that's a, a decent way. We don't pinch pennies when we're after ratings. Uh, of course, now you realize that that little off-the-cuff interview with Frank Ryan uh, was the full extent of my television experience. No problem. It's all there. You're a trained newsman. You know how to dig for information. You ask questions with a point. You have style plus integrity. And you have a built-in national reputation. Uh, how many papers carry yourself? 176. Minus the 11 Woodard publications, 165 uh, across the country. Which brings up an important point. I uh, quit the Woodard group because they interfered with my independence as a reporter. Now, that has to be guaranteed, absolutely. I mean, if it's integrity that you want, well, then I have to have complete control of my work. So be it. You're your own man. We cover ourselves with a disclaimer. Our reporter's comments are his own. We accept no responsibility, etc., etc. No interference spelled out in contract. Absolutely, of course. Uh, you understand, though, that it works both ways. If in your research you uncover something damaging to someone close to you... Are you talking about Frank Ryan? Uh -huh. Now, your first assignment is going to be to follow up on today's big event. I'm sorry that we didn't have our camera people down at Ryan's bar when the lady dropped a bomb. We were expecting one of those standard uh, hat from the ring things. Yeah, well, so were we. Frank's as shocked as anybody. Oh, is that so? Well, if anyone has the inside track, I'm sure it's you. I should tell you right now, Tom, I'm after the truth. But I don't believe there's a word of it in that woman's story. However, being a news person, I am uh, dedicated to finding out everything I can, no matter how it reflects on anyone. Good! I should also tell you that I'm convinced of Frank Ryan's integrity. Not because we're related, but because he proved it to my satisfaction a long time ago, before I married his sister. Oh? Yeah, Frank made some mistakes early in his career. I knew about them, and I, uh, I thought that he could possibly be bought. Blackmail? Yeah. Somebody powerful did try to strong arm it. Frank laid his counsel seat right on the line. Went straight to the party. He told them he would resign his seat rather than sell out. Party backed him all the way. And the rest is history. But of course, there are still some people with questions about what happened up there in the Senate. I know that he was exonerated later on, but then this woman shows up claiming, claiming to be a discarded wife. Someone's brilliant idea of a setup. Prove that. Okay? I intend to. Roger, can you help? Me? How? I don't know. But there's got to be a way. This is so big that someone is paying that woman to ruin Frank, and we've got to find out who and fast. Frank deserves a chance for a comeback. Uh, well, maybe he does, but you know, I find it very interesting that uh, for a fair-haired boy who came from such wholesome stock as the Ryans, Frank's been in this trade before. Roger. Look, I, I'm not saying that he's responsible. I'm only citing history. All the more essential that we clear his name. We? Everyone that knows Frank and who loves Maeve and Johnny and, and loves what they stand for. So what can I possibly do? Now, I'm sure that Bob and Jack and Frank and all their cronies are out digging like crazy. And if it is just standard dirty tricks, They'll find out who's behind it, and they'll blast them away. I don't think it's that simple. The timing's off. Then what? Vengeance. Personal vendetta. Hollis Kirkland? Possibly. Your friend, Ray Woodard. Maybe. She's mad enough. In fact, the last time I talked to her, she, uh, all but swore revenge on both the Ryan boys. 
I knew it. It had to be her. So will you help? Oh, no, wait a minute. You can't ask me to go to Ray and try to extract information from her. Why not? What, are you kidding? Why can't you help? For us. Who exactly is us? I am not Orion. I am not Orion worshiper. Look, I, I, I like Maeve and Johnny, and over the years I made a certain peace with both of their sons, and I have been married to Delia. But then again, who has it? I'm not talking about the Ryan. I'm talking about the Colbridge. And amongst our little clan, there is only three of us. And we all depend on each other's support. And you've given me that support lately, and I appreciate it. But what about Jill? Jill? Jill equals Frank. They're on again. Well, I... I'm not surprised. And how are you about all that? I'm all right. I mean, obviously, it was meant to be. And I want them to have their dreams, so will you do it for Jill, please? Well, can't you get somebody else? I know that Ray is an obvious suspect, No one I... has the connection with Ray that you have. You're asking me to, to exploit a friendship. I haven't got that many, you know. <laughs> All right. All right. I agree. If, if Ray has done this, she's gone too far. Besides, the uh, idea of being a spy for the Ryan camp is at least entertaining. He challenges me. I'll see what I can do. Thanks, Roger. Yeah. Bye. You want to hear about this? Unless you'd rather not, I'd understand. Oh, no, dear, to the contrary. I love talking about her. Keeps her closer to me. <laughs> not that any of us have trouble remembering her, mind you. <laughs> she was indelible. <laughs> ah, yes, that was a good word. After she died, you know, and some of the horror had passed, I dreamed about her nearly every night for a while. I still do, but not quite as much. And those dreams were such a balm to me. She was simply there. The whole sense, the whole experience of her. Living color. Yeah. All her joy and her fierceness and her stubbornness and her love. <laughs> and one of the dreams I remember particularly, she turned to me and she grinned. She said, you see, Ma, it's okay. You can conjure me up anytime you want. And then she waved and she walked away. And I woke up. And that's how she was. She just couldn't abide it if you were down or discouraged. She had to come up with a million and one ways you could cope with the situation and change it. <laughs> she would even share in the help if you deserved it, mind you. Oh, well, you had to make the effort. Though. Oh, I should say so. That was one of my daughter's famous flaws. Her... She expected a good deal from people. Well, it sounds as though she gave a good deal. Oh, yes. Indeed, she did. Everything she had to ever have let, she did. <laughs> and... She took a dim view of people who wouldn't do the same. As I said, tolerance was not her long suit. I don't suppose she was a quitter. No, indeed. She was not. Oh, dear. She hated the idea and the word. She felt that she had this notion that if you just stuck to something and plugged it out, eventually it would yield. She had to see things through, in her opinion. Uh, did yours succeed? Well, that depends on what you mean by success. Well, what was Mary's idea of success? Oh, well, no, no, don't tell me. Just do your best, no matter what the consequences. May I assure you, she greatly preferred to win. Was she a sore loser? Mm -hmm, you might say. But she always claimed her brother Francis was much worse. Tell me something else. What? Why, Jack? We all wondered about that, especially her father. How did they meet? I mean, I could ask Jack, of course, but somehow... <laughs> Jack still has his boundaries. Yeah, and they seem so movable. I mean, one day they're gone, and then the next day they spring up. Oh, they're not nearly as bad as they once were, let me tell you. Before Mary. Mm. You think that that's the reason in the beginning, at least to begin with. Jack was a challenge. He was an outrage as far as he was concerned. <laughs> he was a loner. I had no ties and didn't want any. They met, you see, when he was doing research on the story for Francis, when Francis was running for city council. And it was an on and off again thing, because Mary, she didn't approve of many of the things that Jack wrote about her brother. And Jack's attitude was that he was simply doing his job. 
Mr. Finelli and his phenomenal integrity. Well, Jack was honest in a way that Mary wasn't at that point. Oh? Well, not that my daughter wasn't fiercely truthful, but she had these blind spots when it came to people that she loved. She could not tolerate the fact that they would be criticized or even shown as human. Well, and of course, that's what Jack does so well. Well, he made her throw up in that area. And she helped him crack his shell. He didn't want to need anyone. And he insisted that he couldn't share and he didn't want to. And she was not going to have any of it. She kept slugging away. Yeah. Well, I love her for that. But do you suppose that uh, since he lost her, some of those attitudes have come back? Oh, not all of them. No. In fact, Ryan pulls him out of it. Well, then you too. I mean, he just adores all of you. That's mutual, you know. <laughs> he and John still go a few rounds occasionally, but there's care and there on both sides. And as far as I'm concerned, he's like another son. Mary would be pleased with that. Mm. Yes, I think she would be, indeed. But you know what would make her most pleased? If Jack were happy and settled and would finally let go of his grief. Huh. I wonder if there's anyone who could make him do that. I hope so. See me papers? I think this one is my favorite. Oh, what I would have given to have seen Frank Ryan's face. What happened, Roger? Come on, tell me everything you know. No, nothing more than you read. Frank was about to announce his candidacy. Then this person named Charlotte appeared, claimed to be a divorced wife that he owed a fortune to, <laughs> and pandemonium reigned. <laughs> oh, for a bright man who can be so dumb. You would laugh and actually marry in her. You're saying you believe her? Come on, Roger. This is Frank Ryan we're talking about. Do you really think he went 14 months without a woman in his life? I suppose making it was just the easiest way to get hold of her cash. Besides, she does seem to have a marriage certificate to prove it. Well, there are such things as forgery. Could be another setup. Hmm, could be. In which case, it couldn't happen to a sweeter guy. But somehow, I suspect it's all valid. Why? Because I know Frank Ryan. Remember, darling? I was silly enough once to want to marry him myself. And you were very very angry when that fell apart. Yeah, I didn't know when I was lucky, did I? Right about now, I suppose you'd be running on my alimony check. Ryan's all rallying around. Yeah, doing the best they can. Yeah, the entire campaign staff, most of whom we must admit are blood relatives, in there trying to salvage the shreds of Frank's reputation. You're thoroughly enjoying this, aren't you? Why shouldn't I? I mean it, Roger. Why shouldn't I? You know what he did to me. If it weren't for Frank, Ryan, Kirk, and I would be married now. Kim and Arlie would have a home with us. He smashed all my dreams. You bet. I love watching him go up in smoke. I think what I enjoy most about it all is that it seems to have been so very public. And so very total. According to the stories, the entire clan was there trying to share in his triumph. I honestly believe that you had done it. Me? Mm. Really? <laughs> mm, don't I wish. We'll say one thing. If it is a setup, I do envy whoever thought of it, because if I'm having fun right about now, they must be ecstatic. Any idea who is doing it? Someone who thinks as highly of Frank as I do? One H.K. the third? Kirk. Now, I doubt that. Might he not do it for your sake? Kathy holds the purse strings now, Roger, more than ever. Oh, yeah. I'm sure he'd like to buy us a little vengeance, but I doubt she'd let him. And as for me, much though I do wish I could take responsibility, well, it'd be sheer madness to try something like that on Frank. Couldn't get away with it twice. No, I'm afraid all my plans are much more direct. I was just going to bombard him in the newspapers and on the airwaves, send out dozens of researchers to find every mistake he ever made in his whole life and publicize them. 
I was thinking of running an interview with Julia. You see if I couldn't dig up all the old scandal and gossip about Gillian. That was in the works. However, now it looks like I'm not going to have to let think or am I? I can just sit back and watch Frank squirm. <laughs> in town is Carol Burnett. It's Verla Grubb, B okay. as in Big Creek Verla. She's in search of her real father. His name, Mrs. Wallingford, is Lenny Black. And in search of a new love. And Pine Valley will never be the same. I like to change your name. Don't miss guest star Carol Burnett this week on All My Children. bathing cap system to control who went out how far in the water and as the children passed certain tests they went to shoot the cap well the blue cap meant they were really good swimmers they could go all the way out to the float but children under seven years old were issued yellow caps no matter how well they swam well mary who happened to be sick that made her wild so the first day they put her into the water she swam all the way out to the float they went out in the rowboat and brought her right back she did that seven days oh, in a row no. they finally just gave up and gave her a blue cap at six <laughs> oh jack Mrs. Ryan's been telling me such lovely stories. <laughs> Hello, Lilith. Well, she has a lot of them. <laughs> Have you got any news for us? They hired me. I'm going to be on TV. Station WTJ TV twice, maybe three times a week. Big money for me. Isn't that grand? That's marvelous. You're still going to do your column, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is strictly experiment. I don't know how I'm going to like working with all those bodies around. I, uh, I like my privacy. Yes, I know that. But to think of how many more people you're going to reach with your work this way. And this is a mother talking. And think how much better able you're going to be to clear up the truth about Francis. If that's appropriate, of course. I'll do what I can. You know that. I do. Well, I'm going to check on Miss Ryan. She's doing everything her power to the gorgeous tonight. <laughs> well, are we on for the ballet tonight or not? I don't uh, dress like this for the movies. Uh... Come to think of it, I don't dress like this for the ballet. But it's house seat. That's what's bothering you, house seat. Oh, house seats are fine. We get to see everything. Everyone gets to see you. Uh, did you have to cut your interview short or something? Would you rather be working on a story? I'd like to follow up on Frank, yeah. But there's nothing to do right now. Besides, Ryan is looking forward to the ballet. So am I. More to the point, I want to spend the evening with you. Well, then, um, let's gather up the kid and get going. Lovely. Car's right downstairs. You mean that block-long limo parked in front of the bar? That's your car? Yes. Does that matter? No, no, no. I, I like limos. I used to ride around with Ray Woodard all the time when she was my boss. So... So, this is going to be a special night. Right. Oh, I just love this theater. Look at the ceiling. So many lights. Yeah, it's just magic. And row after row of people. Look, imagine watching from way up there. We could take her up there, didn't miss her. If she were with me, that's where we'd be sitting. Here's with you. You know what I mean. Yeah. You know what Amanda and I used to do? Wow. We used to look down there in the orchestra seat and try and spot the kids in the audience. And then we'd watch them. But I mean, really watch them. And pretty soon, we'd see them looking back. They were watching us watching them. <laughs> sure. Try your luck. I'm very excited about your new job. I think you were born for TV journalism. Hardly, but I'm excited about it, too. Well, that's good to know. You were not exactly jumping up and down about it at the Ryan. I'm happy. I'm glad. How'd you do? 
Oh, let me guess. You found those three kids in the fifth row, right? Right. <laughs> okay, now watch over there, and pretty soon, you'll see the conductor come out of there, and then the curtain will go up, and then Coppelia begins. It's pretty exciting. I know just how you feel about it, too. You can't wait for it to begin, and you hate for it to end. Yeah. But you know, one thing that helps when it does end is if you get to go backstage and meet the prima ballerina, and we'll do that. We will? Uh-huh. <laughs> now, you watch. Tell me when the conductor's coming. It was really wonderful of Maeve to find that book for her with the Coppelia story. Maeve's a good woman. So how'd your boss like you in your new evening clothes? I think you look great. Actually, I hate him. Only own a tux because I have to, mostly uh, for political functions. Which you'd much rather be covering right now. Pardon? Nothing, it's just that you're tense and it shows. Fish out of water gets tense, I guess. Mm -hmm. She has Tuxedo, limousine, house seat, backstage, greet the stars. Not my world. If you're implying it's the world of the idle rich, try and remember that I earned my backstage privileges. I worked very hard for the San Francisco Ballet. And I've been on the New York City Theater Ballet board for about four years I now. I don't question that. It's just that I meant your lifestyle is completely different from the one that... Said you and Mary had. Why bring Mary into it? Her name was on the tip of your tongue. Wait, the conductor! Okay, here we go. of the kind of job you'll do as a U.S. congressman. Turn it off, Frank. No. Yes. A man who would steal from his wife would steal from the public as well and expect to get away with it. Frank Ryan never expected me to come after him, but I have. And I want everyone who will listen to be very careful. Please do not put power into this man's hands. From the Sancerre Hotel, I'm Sam Larson with Charlotte Greer Ryan, alleged ex-wife of Frank Ryan, the top contender for the U.S. House. Charmer, huh? Talented woman. She's killing us. I can almost believe her. What was that about, uh, the perfect liar? She's good. I mean, she really is a good liar. I don't think there's any such thing as a perfect liar. I mean, there really isn't. Frank, did you scare her when you talked to her face to face? No, not so as you'd notice. All right, I want all our moves clear, Bobby. I want every lead track. Right, right. Okay? Right. Let me help, okay? I can help. I'm good at that, okay? Yeah, honey, uh, take the phone off now, please. So if Sofsky doesn't call us, we'll call him. Yeah, right, right. Could I talk to you for a minute? Certainly. Yeah. Well, she was talking before. You almost believed her, right? Just for a split second, didn't you? Now, Miss Greer is extremely attractive. Right. That's what makes her very convincing. And that's very bad. She's beautiful, she's got proof, she's getting publicity, and the woman really knows how to lie. Roger, I'm going to stop her. You? Yeah, I'm a part of the family. Siobhan is helping with the police. Patty is helping Siobhan. Jack is investigating. Bill's in St. Louis investigating. You're even a part of it now. Then why not me? Well, Dee, my first thought is she couldn't care less whether Frank gets elected. Wait, I'm, 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 I'm sure you want to make some points up. 
up around here. Knowing Frank, he's probably still angry that you made little John look like a thief. Well, that's not important. Not why I want to help. It's that I want to help, right? Touche. Okay, but the question is, what do I do? Well, I think that your best bet is nice, quiet, calm support, if you can manage that. For instance, instead of announcing that you, uh, you believe her, Say that she's obvious, that you see right through her, that the voters will see right through her. That is supportive. Yeah, but that's talking. I only want to just talk. Well, what would you prefer? Tracking the woman down? Forcing her to confess? Yeah. See, stay with quiet support. Uh, some, Frank. They were great at headquarters, but the computer drew a blank. Yes, he's got, he's got no record. I tried Charlotte Greer, I tried Charlotte Greer Ryan, all the variations, including youth oh. as an alias. Uh, no. what about the marriage certificate? Well, that was just as we suspected. It was filed legally in the state of Missouri about uh, 14 months ago. Back yep. Of course, but Jill may have found it. Oh, Jill doesn't know anything. I take it hour. easy, Bobby. Jill traced the parents of Charlotte Greer. They're both dead. I mean, what is this? She drops down out of the sky, she bulldozes Frank, and then she flies away. Hey, not on your life. Look, we're starving. I suspect you guys are. So uh, I'm going to go down and get some sandwiches, and then we'll map out tomorrow's strategy. You with me? Food is food. Food. Yeah, yeah we're with you. All righty. Well, I better be on my way. Good luck. Rogers, thanks for the word on Ray. I appreciate this. Yeah. Sandwiches. Uh, that's yeah. support. Uh, you got to clean up for the Just to clean up. Well, I am going to help, you know. I am going to help them. Look at the article one. Look at the article one. You know, I'm second, so I... I have some stuff I have to do. Okay, Jim, thank you. Thank you. Go ahead and do it. Okay, well, maybe you can tell Pat and Siobhan that I'm not hungry anymore. Article three, I wouldn't have signed that even if I had... If I never said eyes on the woman, even if I had never signed such a stuff. This damn thing. That's the thing I can't understand. I... Palpable phony, and she couldn't find it. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Where to, Miss Kirkman? We're going to uh, the sweet boutique for dessert, Alfred. Right. You know, they danced in these shoes just once, and then they never used them again. I'm going to keep it forever. You're going to have a whole collection by the time I'm through with you. <laughs> you might even wear some yourself. Me? Uh-huh. I started dancing when I was just a little bit younger than you are. And as far as I'm concerned, I think six is really just about the perfect age to begin. I mean, if you're interested. If she's not, at least she never has been. Yes, I am. <laughs> Stop looking like you want to slug me, huh? Just admit that you had a good time. I did. <laughs> Turns out the ballet agrees with me. Fairly, at least. The best part is when your dog is coming to life. Oh, yes, indeed. Somebody's getting sleepy, huh? Let me just let her nap and have our champagne. Our what? Champagne, yeah. right there. Glasses, too. Oh, way too much. Oh, please. Well? Uh, oh, uh, red wine and we hot juice. French champagne at the Ritz. Yeah. When you know. You know, I love your apartment and your wine and, and your subway, all the things you share with me. Why don't you know what I have to share with you? Expensive champagne and limousines, those are not bad things. Expensive doesn't mean evil. You make me feel as though I should apologize for enjoying the money I'm so fortunate to have. I'm sorry, ma'am. Didn't mean to do that. Well, okay. Stop it. I don't know if I can. If you want to, you can. I don't know if I want to, be. My attitude towards wealth and living high goes back to where I came from, who I am. I'm not comfortable with this. I'd rather Ryan weren't either. Well, all right, but make me understand why. Oh, hi, Cookie. 
Are we going now to dessert? Well, that was the plan at intermission. How do you feel about it now? I have to go to school tomorrow. I think it's best if we uh, just drop us off at the house. No, Daddy, please. No. Next time. Yeah, next time. All right, now you cheer up. We've still got the whole ride all the way downtown, okay? Alfred, uh, Mr. Finelli and his daughter are going home. We'll just skip dessert. So drive straight to the village, and then he'll give you directions from there. Yes, ma'am. For years, the whole thing. She looked me right in the eye and said she could fall in love with me all over again. Well, well she's an actress. Gotta go get a movie. <laughs> she's an actress, all right. Yeah. She knew all her lines, knew how to delete. Skills, classes, teachers, professional orders. She's an actress. Georgia, she's still in the office. Damn, where's my head? Three down? hours earlier out in LA, they'll give us some time. We can have the cops check out some names. Just hope she's still in the office. Right. Georgia! Greg, listen, I'm glad you're still there. You may still be able to pull us out of the fire. Now, it suddenly dawned on us over here that this Charlotte girl has got to be a professional actress. That means you've got. Right. Exactly. Okay, good. I'll leave it in your hands. And thank you. Now, if she can get. Wait a minute. We still ducking Azovsky? Yeah, I think so. Right for now, anyway. We may have some good news for him later. Okay. All right, now if we get... George, you... Yeah. Oh, Bill! <laughs> well, Mike, we were just talking about it. Hi! How's it going? Yeah, yeah, well, I'm here to find out. You see the TV stuff? Yeah, yeah. Did you? Yeah, down at the club with Monaghan and Ferris. Mm -hmm. yeah, we tried to call here. The phone was busy. Bill, they can't take Frank out of the running yet. Well, look, they don't want to, believe me. If you guys don't shake that woman, don't break her story, show her up as a fraud, well, the message I bring is your candidacy's in big trouble. Okay. Bill, I'm just going to tell you one thing. We are going to prove that she's a liar. Now, I don't know how yet, but we're going to do it, and fast. Okay, Sean, I'll tell them 10 a.m. tomorrow. Hi, yes. I have to put these towels in the bathroom. Uh, no, not at this hour you won't. Let me have the towel. Oh, no, I can't, Dara. My supervisor's right down the hall. And you see, I gotta get home because I gotta see my kids. And there's been so much confusion. Everybody's been covering for everybody else. And look, if my supervisor down the hall sees a guest doing the work, I'm gonna be in a lot of trouble. All right, come in, but make it fast, please. Oh, good, I'll be quiet. Just in case there's someone to see. No, wait, one second thought. Since your supervisor can't see you, just let me have the towel. Oh, no, no, it's a question of responsibility. It's a question of whether I go out in the hallway and call your supervisor. Now, let me have the towel, Oh, no, 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 just wait a second, Doc. Look, Doc, i got to explain something. I am very, very serious about my work. And, you know, when I make a bed properly or when I put linen on a rack, it's like a part of me goes beyond the bed and beyond the towel. You see, I feel like I'm a part of the customs and the standards of this hotel. And particularly today because uh, Mr. Mangano, oh, he's had a terrible day today. Who's Mr. Mangano? Oh, uh, the uh, concierge. You see, uh, he's had a terrible day because his daughter, Frida, has been in labor for 36 hours. Yeah, with, with twins. Twins? And yeah, oh, yeah, oh. there's been a lot of confusion today. So uh, these towels that were supposed to be on the uh, 12th floor, they're on the 9th floor, but it took so little to get them here. Well, what kind are they? The baby. Oh, healthy. Oh, oh yeah, big, uh, mm. big baby twins, boys. Boys. Yeah, two of them. Yeah, uh, it's just going to take me half a minute. Oh. Oh. Oh, it seems you have a problem. A credit card is almost a necessity. Some companies would rather not do business with people who don't have a major card. But are you aware of the hidden cost of obtaining a credit card? Find out what it costs when you don't read the fine print. 
Todd Ryan's home. I love you. I'm having a little trouble standing up. Jack's confession catches Lee off guard. Ryan's home. recently, yes. Oh, yeah, but you weren't born there. <laughs> that means I've lived many places. You have a family? Doesn't everyone? Uh, yeah, but, you know, people who care about you, you know, people that you could count on in uh, times like this. No. Oh, I'm so sorry. Thank you. Look, I know I'm asking you a lot of questions. You think I'm rude? Not rude. Obvious. Pardon me? Did Frank send you? Or was this your own idea? I don't know what you mean. Of course you do. Delia. Come 
mother was born over a bar. Her father grew up in an orphanage. So why at age five is she in a box seat at the ballet and giving a chauffeur orders from the back seat of a limousine? Having fun? Of course she's having fun. That's the point and the problem. Fun is a problem. It's a lifestyle to which I do not aspire, nor with which am I particularly comfortable. In fact, given some of the realities of this world, I find it slightly corrupt. Are you serious? Completely. Lee was corrupting Ryan by taking her to the ballet? No. By confusing dance and discipline and, and, and color and music with box seats and limousines and autographed coaches, all the rest of things those people need to feed their egos and separate themselves from the rest of us. Ooh, you are such a snob. Oh, sure. His hair shirts in a vow of poverty, right, Jack? I mean, really exclusive. You can feel superior to almost anybody you know. Boom! Boring! I do not want our kids impressed with superficial values. Now, what's the matter with that? Who is impressed? Ryan thought the whole scene was a hoodie. Lee certainly doesn't think twice about a limousine, but impresses her when you find your way uptown on the IND. So who is taking it seriously then? You take Ryan to the stadium. George hears you there, and he asks you to sit with him for a couple of innings, talk about who's going to get traded next week. He congratulate Craig on a home run. He signs a ball for Ryan. His goose pulls her pigtail, tells her she's gorgeous. She loves it. What is the difference between that and tonight? That's my scene. I earned it. And Lee earned hers. She's serious about the ballet. She's putting heavy time on that board. Why can't she share the rewards with the kids? What's really going on? I don't know. I do know. Very nicely. Just fun with you. Mutual. So, if you and me wanted to get together on a permanent basis, I wouldn't be a problem after all. Right. And here goes one more line of defense. Yeah. But it feels like more than that. Tell me how. I might have to share Ryan with somebody else. I did that once, though, a little with Rose. A lot with Ma. Well, maybe it doesn't count. Why? It's almost the same as sharing it with you. It's okay, Jack. No. I want Ryan to have a mother. You're a mother. I've done everything I can do for her. I gave her life, and I left her you. Mary. She knows me. She'll grow up knowing me. I trust you and Ma to take care of that. And she'll love me. But I want her to have a mother she can love now. Someone she can put her arms around. Alive. I gave her a life. But I can't share it with her. You can. If that's what you both decide to do. Limousine Lee. So that's your style, huh? Different from yours, Oh, kid. so what? Style, not substance. Don't take it too seriously. <laughs> if Ryan wakes you up at 2 a.m. looking for that, it's your own fault. Yeah. about tonight. I know something went wrong. I don't know what. Uh, let me come up. I'll tell you all about it. Now? Yeah. Please do. Be there in 20 minutes. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, come on, Delia. Delia? Who's Delia? Who do you think I am? 
Delia Reed Ryan Ryan Coleridge. Right. Frank Ryan's first wife, the mother of little John. And I thought the stories that Frank told me about you were absolutely fascinating. Oh. Mm -hmm. I would be surprised if Frank had sent you to me. Delia, I think it was your idea. How did you recognize me? Frank used to carry pictures of me in his wallet, but he hasn't done it in Frank was always surrounded by pictures of his family. One wall of his apartment was papered with them. His bedside table was a forest of frames. Pictures of his parents and you, his brother and sisters, and you, little John, and you, your brother and you. In fact, he used to say it was almost impossible to get a picture of the family without you in it because you didn't want to be left out. Dita, I understand that. I thought then that the Ryan family were the most attractive, most loving people in the whole world, and I couldn't wait to be one of them myself. You're lying. You have to be lying. You're lying. Why? Because Frank said so. Of course, if Frank never lied to you, did he? In law school, those evenings supposedly spent at the law library that were really with Jimmy. And how about the long nights of the first campaign? When he'd come home at 3 o'clock in the morning, exhausted, and he'd turn away from you in bed. And after four hours of sleep, he'd be up, showered, shaved, and on the, the go again. To his politics. And, uh, Frank would never tell you that. Of course. I made that up. Oh, all right, Julia. Technically, he didn't lie to you. He just didn't tell you what he was doing. Any more than he told Jillian when it was her turn. You know, I, fi I find this very interesting. I thought that among all of them, that you would have been on my side. You're wrong about that. Frank and I have had a lot of problems. That's true. He hasn't been the perfect husband, and I certainly haven't been the perfect wife. But he's the father of my little boy, and the Ryans are the only family that I have. So I would never turn anyone on side against, except when it's in your own best interest. What do you mean? Delia, it seems to me that I want you very much to believe me. What will convince you? I can tell you stories of your childhood, of Bobby's friendship with Frank. Sad stories. I was very touched by them. I can tell you Ryan history and Maeve and her Michael O'Cleary, her father, and Skipper and Connie Cork. I could casually mention Frank's shamrock tattoo. How about that one? Oh, you are very clever and very well prepared. But I know you're making all this up. And tell me, who and why would anybody go to this extreme? To block Frank's nomination? I'm not that politically astute, Delia. I, I, there must be easier ways to accomplish that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't understand why. Well, then maybe you can understand this. Frank made me fall in love with him. Frank made love with me. I felt secure, I felt safe, I felt cherished. He proposed to me and I accepted. He put a prenuptial agreement in front of me, I signed it. And then he divorced me. And he came back here and financed a congressional campaign and a marriage to Jillian with my money. Well, I'll see him dead first. Can you understand that, Delia? No. Oh. But I understand about lying. I know a lot about lying. And I know how to lie. And I know that in order to have a good lie, somewhere, someplace in your heart or in your head, there's truth. And that's why people believe your story. See, I don't exactly believe your story. But I know your feelings are real. Frank hurt you somehow. You are as sensitive as I thought you might be. 
I haven't said everything. I don't know how I can. I almost went mad with pain. See, that I didn't pursue Frank Ryan. Oh, I, I thought he was beautiful and arrogant and, and full of life and absolutely wonderful, but I didn't go after him. It was just the opposite. He could have left me alone, but no, he didn't. He followed me. He pursued me. And that, I think, was cruel. That is what I find uh, unforgivable. I don't think it's anything I can do with her. Delia, please don't go. I can't listen to you anymore. I can't even be in the same room with you. Who are you, really? I am Charlotte Greer Ryan. You will understand that, dear. You will understand that very soon. I should make an effort to sit still and listen, but I really can't. Not, uh, I just have to say this one thing. I like limousines. I love champagne at any hour, but especially after the ballet or the, or, or the theater. I, and I adore house feet. And not because I can be seen, but because I can see. And on and on like that. And it's a catalog of privilege, I know. And I can live without any or all of it, but why should I? You shouldn't. That's right. That's right. And now tell me why I shouldn't share it. You've got your red wine and your subway and your bleachers, and you share it with me, and I love every minute of it. And then I try and return the privilege, and... and no, privilege is suspect. Luxury is corrupt. Now, maybe opera in the park, by virtue of the cold, cold ground and the mosquitoes, is more noble than opera at Lincoln Center. But do you know what that makes you? Hair shirt snob. Perfect. I wish I'd said that. Go back to sit still and listen. No, 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 no. Maybe not. I'm having such a good time, this has got to mean I'm mad. Now, you see, by some mind-bending twist of logic, you managed to suggest that tonight was not good for Ryan. That's it. That's what's got me so angry. That's why I'm so furious. The hell with you. Why can't I share my stuff with Ryan? Me? Huh? Let's talk about that, Jack Finelli. Shut up. Don't. You're right. 